Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Advanced Tactics Gold. This is episode number 16 and we will be continuing our push towards Coutance in this episode. It'll be basically entirely fueled by our massive swell of artillery by Bristol. Um, this has basically kept us in the game. I, I think that we're going to need to swap out artillery pretty soon for anti-tank guns at the gun factory we have because we're really just starting to get pushed around by the number of armored cars that France and Germany both have. Um, they're both mass producing those and infantry guns. So in order to be able to counter that, we need some kind of anti-tank anti -tank capability. The best thing I think for that is going to be anti-tank guns. Now these are not terribly good on the offensive against armored cars um, or tanks, but it, I mean, the description here says it all. They are excellent defense against tanks. And I think that's what we need to do. Um, Armored cars themselves are not fantastic on the defense. They're mainly geared, um, you can see that they have twice the attack strength against infantry when they're on the attack versus defending. And they also have lower hit points. So it's, it's, more, it's more than just double. It's slightly more than double the capability. Um, so artillery is, we're gonna have to share anti-tank and artillery out of our gun factory and really I suppose ideally we need more than one gun factory. Uh, even better would be probably if we just researched some armor ourselves. Now an armored car can beat an armored car uh, in, if you use them in off, uh, offensively. The one thing I don't like about them is they are such supply hogs. 16 supply and this is what I'm talking about. So against armor, it's still half as good, so 50% better. 450 versus 300 on the attack and still has that hit point advantage. I think that this is trying to simulate or really it's an abstraction of the fact that if armor is standing still, it's really not quite as effective. So on the attack when it's moving, it should be harder to kill. And I suppose it also is better on the attack than trying to fit it into an entrench entrenched position or something. Also note that armor cars, any kind of armor, get zero entrenchment everywhere. So there's no defensive bonus for leaving them in the forest longer or anything like that. All right, so that's a lot of talking. Let's get to the action. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bombard this hex with again, two of my best artillery. So we got this 123 and we have this 120. I'm just trying to annihilate these guys as much as possible because they are the counter attack um, threat. And if I want, okay, actually, uh, I'm gonna start by actually not doing the 120, just the 123. I'm not sure what's best. It might just work out exactly the same if you do a follow-up attack or if you do both of them at the same time. But the, the philosophy I'm using here is the lower entrenchment should allow the second round of artillery to do higher damage to these guys. And actually I'm considering not using the second artillery on them right away because it might be better to use some artillery against this pretty powerful hex right here. Now, where is the other artillery going to be used? Well, certainly we're going to use some artillery on this guy. I don't think we need to use the best, so I also want to use artillery here, so let's see. I'm going to use the 110. I'll use the 110 and the 118, the two weakest below the 105 on this guy, because we do want to decimate him. We want this attack to go just really, really well. Okay, that is pretty powerful. Okay, we actually completely destroyed them. Took them down to one readiness. That should facilitate a very easy victory here. So what we'll do is we'll move this unit here to cut off its escape route, and then we'll attack from all three sides. We'll just do all. We want all three of these units involved, which is going to ruin the entrenchment of the unit in York, but I'm going to plug this gap so hopefully York isn't threatened for next turn. And considering they're basically at zero readiness, yeah, um, we don't take any casualties, and we wouldn't expect to. So just killed off a 14. And that is revenge for them having cut off once again our north-south railway. Every time I say it's the last time they're going to cut it off, they just push forward again. Okay, so we still have two artillery, or three artillery remaining, and I think it could go either one, two, or no, only two. We only have two. Yeah. So we can either go one, two, or we can go one, two. Either way, I think I'm going to choose this as the recipient of some friendly barrage of artillery. These guys are very low readiness. 
um, which means a lot more are going to be casualties. Here we got 10. Supposedly we killed 10. And look at this, writing us down from 24 to 2. So they're just really ready to be wiped out. We're going to go ahead and use our Ranger unit here to do that because this is kind of a pivotal unit, this machine gun. I'm not sure if I want... Uh, I want to keep the entrenchment high there. And I don't care. If the Rangers get overrun a little bit, it's not as bad. So... It's a command decision. Maybe it's not the right choice, but it's a command decision. Okay, we did take two casualties, but it looks like we're still killing a lot more than... Well, than it's killing us. We could actually follow this attack up with this unit. He doesn't need to move in, just like we're not moving into this hex. We also don't have to move into this hex. It feels like it's more wipe-up. So we can just kind of clean up any of the remaining units here. Looks like there's five. Let's see if we can get a few more of them. And for free, we got all five. And that actually, I think, it removed their counter, which is even better because we got a political point out of it. And again, I don't think it's wise to move forward because then our unit would be susceptible to being cut off. So we will leave him still in the forest. Okay, good. So that's a lot of action up here. Uh, do we want to use our last bombardment on this hex or this hex? I think I'm going to go with this one in the end because I'm not as worried about this unit as I... Just looking over things off camera, I was worried about this one kind of counterattacking, but it has about the same attack strength or combat strength as these units, which means it should be in no shape to actually attack. Because well, 1 to 1 usually means the defender has a huge advantage, and especially because we have machine guns here, which are um, multiple times like factors better on defense than offense to begin with. So let's go ahead and use the artillery here. And this is a pretty strong hex too, especially with this armor cars. You'll notice that the readiness is 28, so they're pretty low, but having 6 armor cars, the combat um, strength potential of this unit is probably somewhere around, I don't know, just to guess about 120. So it's really significant. It'd be nice to keep these guys um, maybe pinned down. You don't really pin down artillery, but I mean, um, you don't really pin down. Are we not doing artillery attack? You don't really pin down armor, but we're going to pin down all of the infantry and hopefully keep these guys from being supported in any kind of attack. All right, so not much actually occurred. We lowered the readiness a bit, killed a few units, but um, I would say that's still a pretty powerful hex. How are we going to deal with that? I don't know yet. I really don't. Hmm. This red unit, where can you get? Since you can get here, we might do something like this. Put them forward. They'll hold the line, and this 107 can go and anchor this point here. I like that. Okay, and this unit is... Yeah. They're pretty well entrenched here. I'm a little concerned just because they do have the ability to attack me from three sides, but we've been there so long, we're well entrenched. And even the engineers should, I mean, should contribute something. That reminds me, I do want to move these engineers forward before I forget. I want to build a road out of Oxford. Since we're starting to establish ourselves on the east side of this river, it's about time that we um, start supplying our troops a little bit better. Because we were pushed back in the last one, this unit, the 22nd, was forced to retreat. But we can see we we'll, we certainly should counter counter uh, because they've only moved one r rifleman in and it has a readiness of 17. They're just asking to be attacked. Okay, that also probably goes for this guy. He should move himself over into the new region. Yeah. All right, so... This is the best case scenario here for us is to have the French and German fight. I want to kind of facilitate that by kind of caving to the French and allowing them to come into this area. I was originally saying like how I wanted to keep this hex mine and not let the French take it. But now I've kind of reconsidered that and if the French want to take it, they're just provoking action between them and the Germans and I'd be fine with that. I'll let them duke it out, and then I'll just pick up, the, <laughs> pick up all the pieces when it's all done. Hmm. Okay. What was the, anything else I want to do? Oh yes, this unit has artillery, so I'm just going to go ahead and bombard this 75. Weaken him up. He's he'd be pretty susceptible to an attack from three sides, 
I don't think we'll do it on this turn, but we will kind of prepare the way for maybe doing it on the next turn. As you can see, we only killed three units, lowered the readiness just a bit, but if we wanted to, we'd have three 70s attacking a 50, and that should be like four to one odds. We're not gonna do it yet. We'll bombard more before we consider doing that, but, oh. Hmm, this is interesting. We can improve our reconnaissance. Well, maybe we'll do that on a turn when we really think we're gonna need reconnaissance. For the time being, I don't think we have any use for that. Okay, is that all we want to do this turn? No, there was some attacks here, right. I almost neglected. So should we leave? How do we want to arrange these attacks? This one here and this one here, I think, yeah. So we'll attack this unit here just to push him back. They dug in pretty well there, <laughs> and they only took one casualty. Okay, now should we move forward? I don't think so. This is yellow, it's out of supply. And uh, not that we have great entrenchment here, but um, I think it would be wise not to move forward. What we will want to do is move this machine gun out of um, this open plains area, the fields. We wanna get them into the forest where the submachine guns have their advantage. And right now they aren't just equal, they're actually at a disadvantage in the open. Okay, we'll attack here. Should be hopefully another pretty clean fight, it is. Didn't lose a unit, and yeah, their readiness is just destroyed. Okay, I don't think we wanna move into any of these places. That's what this engineer is here for. As soon as we build this road to the protective hex, forest hex that we have here, then we'll be able to expand out um, a little bit further. But that's uh, restricting our supply just enough right now that I don't wanna move any more forward. So we will move this guy back like this, and I will concede this hex. So we'll move this uh, machine gun unit. I think we'll move him south. This will give us a machine gun and normal infantry in two of the vital locations, my two anchor points. And then we also have the double rangers here, which should be all to more or less, I would say, defend this hex against anything. Um, this uh, huge armored car block is uh, pretty threatening, but we, because we don't have the anti-tank weaponry yet, can't really do anything with it. Okay, do we want to possibly create any new units? Now, we still have 13 trucks here. I think that that's not a perfectly distributed number. We have seven trucks here, so yeah, we probably need to give some. And I think this unit only has, what, four trucks? Unfortunately, I'm not sure we can transfer stuff in because we only reacquired the railway on this turn. So I guess we're done with this turn and let's go ahead and see what the enemies do on their turn. First, the Russians. Was that a fight? I think there might've been a battle. Okay, whoa, they pushed into our oil. Well, that's not good. And now they did attack, the Germans attacked, or the French attacked the Germans. That's good to see. Another battle, two more battles, and they ah, they were successful again. This is incredible. I'm, I'm I had a loss for words. We've gotten very unlucky in a lot of attacks. I, I don't want to complain too much. Oh, it wasn't the raw. Okay. I miss I miss all that. I, th I thought for sure it was talking about the raw that we had lost. I was thinking that's impossible. It's so well defended. <laughs> And if they were moving in with armor, armor would suffer would suffer a fifty percent penalty attacking into the into the low mountains, which is the landscape type of any raw. Hmm, that's going to be a bit of a predicament for us. We did see some action going on here. Let's just consult the history and see what what exactly happened. So they did attack with our oil. We lost machine guns, mortars. Riflemen, engineers, lost everything. I didn't conceive of that one being attackable. We had almost equal combat strength and they were fighting over a stream and we lost? That's... Hmm. It's really hard to make sense of this fight. Considering they were attacking over a stream, their armored cars would have been at like a 50% penalty. And... The riflemen would have had a 25% penalty, and we are about even. Rifles, 
Uh, infantry has much better defensive stats than offensive stats. I don't understand this. They also had an attack stack penalty because they were over the 100. Well, we'll just have to chalk it up to really, really, really bad luck. Which, unfortunately, we've had a fair share of <laughs> so far. Alright, so the French attacked the Germans and they completely eliminated that unit. So there wasn't even a retreat. It's just completely eliminated. Let's go to the next battle. Now we were attacked. I thought this was in the raw, but it was just this ranger unit that keeps getting picked on. And it finally succumbed to the advances, so it took pretty serious losses too. I don't think we'll try to reoccupy that point. Although it is dangerous to have this machine gun forest tax surrounded on four sides, uh, there's not really anything we can do about it. I don't think it's good to have our anchor point as a not very well defended um, hex. So. so probably what's better for us to do is obviously retake this and then maybe double anchor this point put in some more troops. Do we have enough perhaps even for, yeah, we can put in another submachine gun guard. Um, of course, that's only possible if we can t overtake this armored car unit. And again, we don't really have, unfortunately. Well, we can bombard it. I don't know if that'll do anything, but we can. We do have a bit of artillery here. Right, which reminds me that we should once again switch these over to the correct headquarters because we do want the artillery to head to the Supreme Headquarters and they can shift from there. Same thing with Bristol. Hopefully that North-South Railway has been like conquered for the last time. And this is incredible. I'm just really surprised that they were able to take this over a stream. I mean, over a stream. Hmm. Probably the best thing for us to do will be to move some artillery south so we can start salvaging the situation here. I mean, we don't need the oil right now. We're obviously in excellent shape on oil, but it's the principle of the thing. That is a strategic objective and we just gave it up. Not to mention they killed a bunch of engineers, which I'm not happy about. Hmm, okay. Well, we have the opportunity to either push on for one more turn or we can call it here. And there is a, a lot I kind of want to think about, but Let's go ahead and just push on. I know I'm gonna to wanna to do an attack here. Let's bombard. I'm not sure if this will do much. Hopefully it will. It looks like it may kill, come on. Ah, darn it. Lowered their readiness a bunch. Obviously they didn't have any entrenchment to begin with. Uh, that seems weak enough that we could attack. So we will counterattack with everyone, except for this machine gun unit. In fact, we'll probably do We'll probably move shift this unit down just so we can attack from a new side. And that will weaken the raw hex, but we'll do a whole bunch of shifting from the north so that because this hex is not as important as this one. All right, let's do the attack. Let's do all and then deselect our submachine gun. Uh, okay, so it does give us a 40% bonus. I'm going to go ahead and let the submachine guns. No, they're too they're too vulnerable. I can't do it. Let's do it this way. Good God, man. We didn't kill a single unit and we lost four ourselves. Well, we're gonna have to do something immediately about this anti-tank situation. I think it's just time for us to research this. Now, we could have ourselves, like I said, gotten armored cars, which would have been only 42 political points. And there's something even to be said about us starting to build light tanks which are just as expensive as anti-tank guns. Uh, but I'm trying to think of things in overall supply. How much does this supply cost? And I know anti-tank guns should not be so supply heavy. Like artillery is only eight. Let's find out what anti-tank guns are. There are six. That's okay. Yeah, that makes up our mind for us. We'll just have to get some horses as well to pull them, but Starting with next turn, we're gonna actually start, whoops, get the anti-tank gun first. And now with the remaining, we don't have enough political points to really do anything, but we can now start building anti-tank guns. 
How many do we want to build? I think we'll just get two of each. Oh, well, anti-tank -tank guns are actually pretty cheap. We can get four for the price of, they only cost 1,000 each. Oh, this is very good. I think even just one anti-tank gun per defensive position should be sufficient. So hopefully that changes, uh, I don't know, that swings things our way, basically. Hmm, okay. Well, that should be everything there. Let's go ahead and do the attack here. I think we're gonna wanna do double artillery bombardment here, double artillery bombardment here. And then whoever's left, we did get a new artillery unit too. So let's have them be one of the artillery bombardments here, which, uh, actually, should I use, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'll be attacking this unit, which means I should probably bombard it with the weaker ones. Okay, let's do this and maybe this 121. Now I have them in groups of four, but you can see for this exact reason that the attack stack penalty for artillery goes up to 10. It's probably better. Eh, it didn't do as much as I was hoping, but it's probably better to have groups of five. So five artillery and five horses. And I may even switch some units around to get that um, number. Maybe I'll do it off camera. Okay, so we did, um, can't, it's hard to see, but the, let's see, see battle stack artillery is 80 and 100 is where you start getting diminishing returns. <clears throat> so each artillery itself is, is worth a battle stack of 10. Let's do the attack up here. And this one, I think since we're going to be possibly attacking this axe, I'm going to use my two best artillery units. Bring out the veterans for this one. And we're getting some very good results. So their readiness is down to nine, that's incredible. I think that's really good. Let's go ahead and let's do this attack. We will attack from all sides, trying to get the best concentric bonus that we can. And that is very good. This is probably the Prototypical, prototypical example of how strong artillery can be. We just crushed them. We pushed them into this area, and what I want to do is actually move this unit here, shift this unit that way. Can this unit get here? Ah, oh, perfect. No, we need them to go there, actually. So our line is going to be a little bit open unless we can shift. I think I'm going to be okay with that. There's no way, I don't think there's any way that this unit especially because it presumably has low readiness, is going to be able to get all the way to here. And even if it does, I think it's still, I think we'll still be in supply through this method. And I'm almost positive that they can't get all the way to this suburban. That would be one, two, three, four. They have, first of all, low readiness, which means their action points should not be at 100. And I think it'll cost 25 per if it wasn't enemy territory. And because it's enemy territory, I assume that the most they'll be able to get is to this hex. It's also just kind of silly of them to try to do that to begin with, just because we'll, we will obviously cut them off and eliminate them. Which should leave us with, yeah, we have two artillery units which haven't fired yet. Ah, aha. Uh -huh. Well, I think, hmm, hmm, <laughs> hmm, I think the best thing to do is actually move one of these artilleries, uh, now moving them does also lower their action points, but we should probably start moving some of the pieces around. I was thinking we should move one north, but if we move them here, they might, it's possible the enemy could attack them. And artillery by itself, actually in combat is abysmal. It just dies way too quickly. It does have the ability, if we look at combat stats, to be in rear area, so rear area is true. But um, if you don't have any frontline troops, which this Sub, um, this division does not, it's pure artillery, then not, there's nothing for it to be in behind. <laughs> the rear area, true, only uh, matters if you have something to be behind. All right. It would be really nice, though, to bombard those guys one time. So let's just take a chance. Oh, let's not take a chance with the artillery that isn't being pulled. Let's take a chance with these. So let's do it this way. So it's just gonna really soften these guys up. And I had an idea too. Um, 
Okay, good. That, that was sufficient. We lowered the readiness by half. Their entrenchment got knocked down. Maybe killed some more. And I, have an, I do have an idea what we can do. For our last artillery bombardment, we'll actually bombard their, the armored cars themselves just to try to prevent them from moving up. So we'll do this attack. We even killed two. Wow, hmm, that was surprising. I wasn't expecting that. Um, so hopefully that lowered their readiness just enough that um, they won't be able to attack our artillery unit that we moved into a, a little bit of a vulnerable position. Actually, this unit here does have the capacity to move forward. So let's just do that. That's even better. Perfect. Okay, so the north is secure. It looks like we're going to be in good shape to push forward across the stream. So maybe this attack was a blessing in disguise. We can kind of use this oil as bait. Let them kind of take it for the time being. But if we push on Neem while they're doing that, um, it will be to, I mean, we'll be taking the much more important strategic objective, especially because oil is not a big concern for us. Okay. I think I'll call it here because we did, um, got some more stuff done, but I do like to think off camera about what I'll do next. I really like, and I think that if you're going to get this game, you must be one of those people who enjoys moving at a slow pace and thinking about things. If you rush in this game, I think it'll end in disaster. So, so thanks for watching this episode and until the next one, take care.